Welcome back to the channel everyone. We've been away for a while but it's really good to be back again. Today, we're going to be making acha timun, which is a pickled mixed vegetable dish often eaten during festivals in Malaysia, like Chinese New Year and Hari Raya. So there are actually lots of different types of acha throughout Asia, but the ones that we're used to here in Malaysia are the Nyonya style acha from Penang and acha Sarawak. So we're making the Sarawak version today. Let's get into it. Let's start by making the acha sauce. We do this first because it needs to rest in the fridge overnight before carrying on. We're going to prepare the shallots, candle nut, turmeric, galangal and lemongrass basically in the same way. Peel the items and chop into small chunks so we can grind it all down in the food processor. The full recipe is in the video description below and we've also included the Malay names for the ingredients to make it easier to find in Malaysia. If you're outside of Malaysia, all of these items should be available in any Asian grocery store. The lemongrass can be a bit fibrous, so do try to cut it down and grind it down as much as possible. When you're buying your galangal, make sure to get one that isn't too woody. It will provide for a better taste in the acha. Okay, so here we're putting on gloves because we're about to cut the turmeric. Your hands will stain yellow for days if you don't use gloves, so we highly recommend it. FYI, it'll probably stain your chopping board as well. We're using store-bought chilli paste here to save time, but if you want to, you could always make your own. This recipe is actually a family recipe from Michelle's auntie, so thanks Auntie Sabrina! The finer you can grind it down here, the smoother the final acha texture. Now, fry the paste in oil until it gets more fragrant. Be careful not to burn it here. We find that you get a more rounded taste with rice vinegar as opposed to regular white vinegar. Also, if you want to cut down the sugar in the recipe, don't use white vinegar as that might overpower the sugar. Stir continuously until all the sugar is dissolved. Now leave this aside to cool and then place it in the fridge overnight. And now for the more labour intensive steps. For the carrots and the cucumbers, we want to cut them into small strips. We prefer smaller strips in our acha, but people do use bigger chunks as well, so you could try either one. For the cucumbers, we prefer to use the locally grown variety because for our palate, they seem to taste better than the Japanese ones. If you know of a faster way to cut these into strips, do let us know in the comments below because it really does take some effort and time. Now to add salt to the cucumbers and carrots to draw water out of them. We're doing them in small batches here so that the salt is evenly spread out. Once that's done, set it aside and let the salt work for at least 30 minutes. When that's done, we have to wash out all the salt. Make sure you do a complete and thorough job here. We've made the mistake before of not getting all the salt out and our acha turned out extremely salty. Once they're washed, squeeze out as much water as you can from the vegetables. The less water there is, the crunchier they will be. You can even use a clean towel to really wring them out dry. Now cut strips of chilli to add to the vegetables as well. If you prefer it spicy, you could leave the seeds in, but we've chosen to remove them here. Cut 
the ginger, garlic and dried prawns into small pieces to prepare them for frying. This here is our favourite tool in the kitchen. It just makes chopping things up so much easier. Okay, so now fry the dried prawns and the garlic without oil. Then for the ginger, fry that with a little bit of oil. Now it's finally time to put it all together. Here's what the acha sauce should look like coming out of the fridge. It should have thickened up a little bit. Use a really large container and start mixing everything together. We're doing it in smaller batches here because it's a bit easier to handle. Finally, this is what you'll end up with. All that's left is to scoop the acha out into some glass jars, making sure to evenly distribute the sauce. And there you have it. This recipe made about four 500ml jars worth of acha. It's best to keep it in the fridge for another 24 hours at least before eating. In Sarawak, it's traditionally eaten with gropo, but we've had it with rice as well and it tastes really good that way too. This acha does take a lot of time and effort, so we usually make a big batch of it. Because of the sugar and vinegar used, it can last up to a month in the fridge with no issues. So I hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.